Well, I'm Monica Maggioni. And I'm Conor McNally. Welcome to a Eurovision first. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Tonight, tonight we are live in more than 30 countries on TV, on the internet, and on radio. With us are the five main candidates to be president of the European Commission. It's their chance to tell 400 million voters why they should get Europe's biggest job. Why? Because your vote will help decide which of them becomes the next president of the European Commission. We are live from the European Parliament in Brussels. Tonight, you will play a key role in the debate by tweeting the issues that matter to you using the hashtag TellEurope. Before we start, here are the rules for tonight. The candidates will have only one minute to reply to each question. They will have three opportunities to come back with 30 seconds of rebuttal. We ask the candidates to speak English to facilitate translation into 23 other languages. Three of them has agreed to do so. The order in which the candidates speak was decided in a draw earlier today. What I want to tell tonight to this audience here, but also to the people who are watching on television over Webstream, is that from 22nd to 25th of May, it's your choice. You decide what direction Europe will take. And we Greens and I, we offer an alternative Europe. I am fighting for a Europe that cares about people more than it cares about banks. A Europe where we revive the European dream of not letting anybody fall anymore, of caring for everybody. A social Europe, one of solidarity, and then one that is again at the forefront of fighting climate change, because this will also determine our future. I offer a Europe of solidarity, of democracy, and of the people. That's what I'm fighting for. And you decide from May 22nd to May 25th. Here's an hour off, and I really hope that you're going to be with us, that you're voting and also fighting on the streets for better, for new Europe. So on the screen here, you can see our Tell Europe social media hub, where Eurovision editors are coordinating an international team of experts from public service radio and TV from across Europe. They're working hard right now. Uh, engaging with people uh, on, on the web. We have social media editors here tonight from Austria, France, Finland, Italy, Spain, and the UK. Many more are working with us online, including public service media from the Czech Republic, Germany, Ireland, Slovenia, and elsewhere. We're not only inviting citizens from all across the European Union to have their say, but we're watching and listening to you. Young people need to be able to study in several countries. I'd like to see young people able to move and grasp opportunities where they are. What I have heard now are the old recipes that didn't work the last five years in Europe. So I think that instead of continuing conservative recipes or the socialist recipes where we are making more debt, we need a new approach. And the new approach, in my opinion, is to go back to the initial idea of Jacques Delors when he launched the internal markets. To use an intelligent socialist, uh, Martin, you are not always intelligent, but he was intelligent, it's true. And I have to tell you... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe uh, can I again have the seconds of uh, Mr. Schulz now, because no he's intervening. No but way. what we want to do is to have a new... OK, you, you're, you're... What we have to do is to start a new wave of integration in the European Union. But in the key markets we have today, capital markets, bank, digital, telecom, energy, that is what we need, using the scale of the European Union to make a new leap forward in the integration and having new growth. Like we did in the 80s, like the large succeed, we can succeed either this time. Uh, okay, so, you know, I want to see what's happening out there in the social media because I think that many people are trying to talk to us. So let's listen to them. Connor. Let me tell you, it's very busy on social media tonight. You are keeping our team very busy. Um, we are trending in five countries at the moment, including Spain, Italy, France, and Belgium. And we can take a look now at the breakdown of languages that you're using. Take a look at the screen there. We have English, obviously, is number one. Uh, most popular language being used on Twitter right now, French at number two. We can also uh, tell you that over 10,000 individual users are engaging with each round of this debate. Keep tweeting uh, using the hashtag TellEurope. Monica. 
Yes, I'm, I'm very interested in those words, you know. I think it's, it's a good suggestion to go through those words and understand. But thank you so much, Connor. Your question was, what is uh, the reason why the turnout was so low? Uh, I think in the past, the European elections were boring. There was no confrontation. Secondly, it was abused for midterm election of national governments. And now we have another situation. I think the debate here shows we are changing uh, in the European Union uh, it, to more democracy, for more controversial debate, more transparency. This is a step forward. But there is another element. We have 27 million unemployed people in the European Union. As we discussed, 6 million unemployed young men and women. We have the highest rate of tax fraud and tax evasion we ever had in the European Union. Taxpayers have to pay for speculators. They are waiting not for more Europe, they are waiting for another Europe. And if we debate the concrete proposals, how to change Europe for more justice and fairness, then I'm sure that we will regain trust of voters and that the turnout will be increased. Corruption is uh, structural in uh, Europe is systemic, particularly in the South, it must be said. And combating corruption is not just something for the member states. It's also something for the European Union as a whole. We believe that we need European legislation which is effective, which has transparency and can crack down on corruption. And we also need to get effective legislation to uh, combat tax avoidance, tax evasion, because that's also a form of corruption and another form of economic crime. Uh, therefore, we believe that all of these things require political will from the governments and from the leadership of the European Union, because behind them uh, there are clashes between big interests, for example, in Italy, where the judicial authorities are trying to tackle the mafia and the nexus between that and the political world. There is uh, uh, very little out of yeah. program that all the candidates agreed yeah. on because Scott I think that uh, Scott Keller yeah. can give us a few seconds while Connor joined yeah, me. So just a second. Scott Keller. We've been debating Europe today, but we shouldn't forget that people elsewhere are suffering, that they are suffering from poverty and hardship and war and persecution. And just as uh, one thing that agree. we care about this is that we're participating, all of us together today, in the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. Thank you.